Hey Red Sox fans, Lou Maloney here. Now I interact with you guys all the time on Twitter, so I, I thought rather than sort of answer some of the questions on Twitter, I would take it to a video as we get ready here for opening day. So I want to start off right away talking about this Red Sox rotation. Uh, I got this tweet from Bruce R. Jones. It says, does the rotation success just come down to health yet again? It always does, right? First off, last year's rotation didn't have a chance. It wasn't health, it was stuff. They didn't have any. Right? This one, different. There's a lot of upside in this rotation. First off, you start with Erod. Now, if it's just dead arm, you shouldn't be concerned. He might miss a start, maybe two, but I doubt it, and he'll be back into this rotation. This was a guy that gave you 34 starts in 2019 and over 200 innings. We all know what happened last year, but to be honest with you, I fully expect Erod to basically do what he did the last two years as a pitcher, and that's be a guy that's a sub-4 ERA to go out there and continue to improve and be one of the better pitchers. So then you go to Nate Evaldi. We all know what he is, right? We all know what he is. 22 starts, maybe. You know, we'll see. The stuff can be off and on. He'll have nights where he dominates. But I wouldn't count on a full 30-start season from him. The guy, Garrett Richards, to me, might be the key to this staff because there is a ton of upside. He had some control problems early in the year uh, in spring training. They worked on some things mechanically, got dialed in a little bit more through strikes. His stuff is nasty. Uh, the question is, you know, he hasn't pitched in a while either. Now, he came back from Tommy John last year pitching for the Padres. So this is sort of year two coming back from it. So you expect something from him. Martin Perez, he is what he is. He's a four-and-a-half ERA guy. You know, maybe even higher. But you want innings from this guy. You want starts from this guy. So he's sort of like that filler in this rotation. Nick Pavetta, to me, is a guy, I don't know if you follow him or not, but tons of promise coming up with the Phillies. Everybody loves his stuff, his spin rate and all these other things, but it hasn't shown in the field yet. Uh, he threw the ball pretty well in camp. He has four pitches he can throw for strikes. So I think, once again, upside there. The thing I like about the rotation is depth. It's not perfect, I mean, but when Tanner Houck is your sixth starter and he'll be in this rotation to start with Erod out, that's quality. Okay, but then you go back to Connor Seabold, another kid from Pavetta you got from the Phillies. He threw well in camp. The velocity was way up since the last time the Red Sox seen him, which was a couple years ago. Matt Andrees coming out of the bullpen's a long guy. He can start. And Garrett Whitlock, the Rule 5 pick from New York, New York Yankees, he was a starter. It's just that getting a taste of the big leagues, he'll be out of the pen. But there's a lot of depth in this rotation. More importantly, a lot of upside. You just need a couple guys to pop. The biggest question to me is I want to move on now is because the New York Yankees and the Toronto Blue Jays, everybody's put them on top of the East. And I understand it. You know, they're good teams. No question about it. Their lineups are outstanding. The Red Sox have a good lineup too. But when we start questioning the Red Sox rotation, I heard Rich Keefe talking about it today. I don't trust any of these guys to give me 30 starts or to be healthy. Let's start with the... Uh, I don't know, the favorites, New York Yankees. Garrett Cole is an absolute stud. No one's going to deny that. Let's keep going, though, shall we? Corey Kluber. Okay, right now he's listed as their number two. In 2019, he had seven starts before the season got shut down. He got hurt. In 2000 and two, 2020, he was with the Rangers. He had one start, one inning. Okay, and he had a slight tear in his shoulder. This guy's thrown seven starts in the last two years. They bring him in here. He's their number two. And everybody, all of a sudden, because he's not on your team, think he's going to be great. There's a ton of question marks with Kluber. How about Jameson Tyon, the kid that they traded from Pittsburgh? I love his stuff. I mean, there's no denying that. But this is a guy, by the way, who didn't pitch last year. You know why he didn't pitch last year? Because after seven starts, again, like Kluber in 2019, he had his second Tommy John surgery in his career. And all of a sudden, these two are locks. Jordan Montgomery's their fourth. He's a lefty. Eh. I mean, you know, so last year, what, he's throwing... He had a 5-1-4 ERA in 2020. You know he's thrown 75 total innings from 2018 to 2020? That's three seasons. I mean, he's basically Martin Perez, but Perez at least gives you length. He at least gives you innings. You have no clue what Jordan Montgomery is as an everyday starter. And then we go to Domingo Herman, who didn't pitch last year either. You know why? He was suspended for 81 games for domestic violence. Good stuff. Great stuff. You got guys that never even thrown for the Yankees, and everybody loves their rotation. Let's go to the Blue Jays, because everybody loves the Blue Jays. Okay, Hunshin Ryu, starter, outstanding. Number one guy, I love him, love him. Number two is Robbie Ray. Robbie Ray had a 6.62 ERA last year, pitching for the Diamondbacks and partly for the Blue Jays. Robbie Ray hasn't been the same pitcher for about two or three years. In the National League, he was good early in his career, 4.5 ERA in 2019. So, that's your number two. Okay, let's move on. Nate Pearson, a rookie with upside. They absolutely love this guy. But he's actually now going to start the year in the DL because he came to camp a little bit late with an injury. Re-aggravated that groin. I think it was the groin uh, a couple weeks ago. Starts the year in the DL. By the way, last year, I think he had, uh, what, five starts with a 6 ERA. He's a rookie. 
but he must be outstanding because he's not on your team. How about Steven Matz from the New York Yankees? This guy's never really lived up to the hype, to be perfectly honest with you. Everybody thought he was the next gun down in New York. He hasn't. I like his arm. I saw him last year against the Red Sox. Very good arm from the left side. Um, how did he do last year? Oh, oh, he had a 9.68 ERA last year for the Mets. So he's lights out, right? And then Tanner Rock, you're talking about just a filler in your, in your rotation. What do you do? Oh, 6.8 ERA last year. So these two teams that everybody loves, and you can say the Red Sox have question marks, what do they have? They both have two good, one starter each. After that, you have no damn clue what you're going to get from any of them. Yes, the Red Sox have rotation questions, but the two teams that everybody wants to hand this division to have just as many, if not more. All right, let's move on because um, this was from Tom Del Greco. And he wanted to know, could the Red Sox be one of the top offenses of the, uh, this year? Yeah, they, they absolutely could. They were last year. As bad as they were, they were. They led the league in, like, I think, batting average last year. Run scored, they'll be in the top five. Okay, you start looking at that bottom third of the order, which I think is the unique part. But still, when you have a lineup of Verdugo, uh, Bogarts, Devers, J.D. Martinez, Christian Vasquez, like you put those guys, those four guys up against anybody in the league, any, any four guys in the league with the potential they have and what they've already done in their careers. The bottom third of the lineup, when you look at a guy like Dahlbeck with Pop, will, you know, will he go 0 for 10 with nine strikeouts? Sure. Will he hit a grand slam his next at bat? Maybe. Hunter Renfro, same thing. Frenchy Cordero is kind of like a wild card. I don't know. They love him. Can never stay healthy. Whatever. We'll see what happens there. Danny Santana, who I really like, you know, is going to start the year in the DL, on the IL. Sorry, I don't want to offend anybody. Marwin Gonzalez, you know, uh, platoon guy, moving around. So there's so much going on with this offense. They can leave the yard at any point, and they're going to score a ton of runs. So, yes, there's no question the Red Sox can have one of the better offenses, not just in the American League, but in all of baseball. The last one here I want to hit on is, because this, this uh, everybody loves Michael Chavis, and I get it, you know, uh, you know, ice horse. Is that what it was? Ice horse. What will the Sox do with Chavis this year? This is from Justin on Twitter. Um, I never thought he was going to make this team. And the only way he was going to make this team was some injuries. And there was kind of a couple injuries here and there, but not enough for him to make this team. Michael Chavis goes down the AAA and has to show one thing. He can either lay off the pitch fastball up or he can start to hit the fastball up. He had a great camp. But if you go back and look, still, breaking balls down, fastballs down, change-ups, he's leaving the yard. He still has some issues with the top of the zone. Nobody says you've got to be a complete hitter, so he's got a hole. Okay. No big deal. It happens all the time. But he's got to go and show he can lay off of it or he can hit it. Right now, he's depth. He's not going anywhere. Arroyo made the team because he's out of options. Chavis has options. He goes down. But trust me, I've been there before. I know how it works. So he goes down there. Give him a ton of credit. I love the fact that he worked on his game in the offseason, became more athletic, became, looks like more of a complete player. So I, I tip my hat to that kid. But he's going to start the year in AAA. He's got to continue to grind down there, prove he can get back up here because he will. You know, he will. There'll be a moment where they're going to need some bodies. He'll come up and have an opportunity to show what he can do. What will Heim Bloom do with him? Listen, if there's a ton of interest come trade deadline, is he going to be an add-on to some kind of trade to improve this club? I could see that happening. You know, we're a ways away from that. There could be a ton of injuries, and he could have an everyday job. But when it comes to Michael Chavis for right now for this team, he's nice to have down at AAA. He's a guy that you know can come up in the big leagues and pop a home run once in a while in case of injuries. So there you have it, Red Sox fans. Get ready for opening day. I'll be in that booth. 2 o'clock, Baltimore Orioles. Be ready to go. We'll talk to you next week when we do this again.